The A50M is one of the OG tanks of World of Tanks Blitz. It's been in the game the entire time, and it has grown stronger each and every year, unlike the Object 140, which has been ruined. So, if you don't have an E50M yet, here is why you absolutely have to own one, because this is currently the best medium tank that you can get in the tech tree. And why is that? Well, let's have a look at the numbers. 3,300 DPM, 247 standard operation with calibrate, 340 alpha damage, 1.4 seconds aim time, 0.3 dispersion, 8 degrees of gun depression, and the mobility, 26 power to weight ratio on certain ground. That is insane. And that, together with the armor of this vehicle, which I'm going to talk about later, so don't go anywhere, is going to be the perfect mixture of firepower, mobility, and armor in this game. Now, 6.2 seconds reload in this configuration. As I already said, I'm going to be using calibrated because calibrated makes a lot more sense on guns that have heat as premium ammunition. So here it is going to be perfectly applicable. Now, the MX-30B, it's a fine tank, but if you put the 30B up against an E50M, the 30B stands no chance whatsoever because this thing... It can come after you. Wherever you are, it is fast enough to do that. It has a, a insane amount of armor for a medium tank that's this quick. And on top of that, it also has this neat little feature that's called the ramming. Because of how the front plate is structured, you can ram into a Sheridan or an AMX 30B or even a T22 and whatever other type of medium. You just ram into them. You're going to do 300, 400 damage sometimes just by simply smashing into them. And you're going to take minimal damage for it. Now, as I already said, the Alpha is 340, which is another nice attempt of wargaming to make the game increasingly more complicated for no reason whatsoever. So, again, 10 Alpha damage is not going to make any difference, but it's still not worthy there. Now, just, just look at that. This vehicle has very good armor. I'll talk about it, but here we go. This is what you want to do in a situation like You don't want to go in and fight that 268 head on. Just gonna egress from that situation and reposition with the excellent mobility right here. Because fighting a tank destroyer head on is most of the time a bad idea. Especially now we have three uh, heavies on the enemy team that are easier to shoot at. And here comes the object who's now pushing forward. So I can easily put a shell into that guy. And now it is a four versus four in this situation. So what do I do? I've already completely eliminated the 30B and the Sheridan, which is what this vehicle is built to do, right? This thing is there to absolutely annihilate enemy mediums, especially if that medium tank player isn't as good, because the medium in most battles is the most important component of every battle. So if you have a good medium tank player, or just a tank, then you're going to have a great time. And uh, the other vehicle in this battle here that I'm platooned with here, the T-125, is the heavy tank equivalent of this vehicle, which I also highly recommend. So if you want me to make a video on that thing, I put it in the comments. But this thing, it's just all around perfect, right? If you want a vehicle that can do anything, anything in this game, the E50M is your tank right here. If you want to have a specialist tank, the E100, like it is there, is easier to play, of course. But this thing is the perfect all-rounder that can do everything all the time. And this is 4,000 damage already right here. So what I'm going to do, very simple, now I want to focus on the concept. In the situation this, 2v3, I want to take out the enemy guns, right? Reduce the amount of damage they can deal. The IS-7 doesn't pay attention and he peeks out and now he's dead, which is very lovely. So all it is about is situational awareness because this tank, if you know a little bit about World of Tanks Blitz, about the maps, about how to position yourself, and you can learn that in the lower tiers. The Panther 1, Panther 2, and the E50 play very similar to this vehicle. So you can have a very nice progression up to the E50M. And once you learn how to actually position this vehicle, you're pretty much gonna be unstoppable. The lower plate is a weak spot like any other tank. The upper plate is a very strong 350 millimeters, so don't try to shoot at that. You can rely on it, especially if you are hull down with the 8 degrees of gun depression. It becomes essentially impenetrable. The turret is, well, quite interesting because the front of it is 285 millimeters and it is very flat, which means you have 300 millimeters of armor. Premium rounds will go through most of the time, so keep the vehicle moving, wiggling back and forth if somebody is aiming at you to avoid that. Also, don't 
turn the turret to the side because obviously this plate being angled the way it is makes it weaker as you turn the turret away from the enemy that's pointing at you. So always point your turret straight at the enemy that you're trying to fight. You also have a cupola on top of the turret, but that is not very important. It can be hit, of course, but keep the vehicle moving at all times. Unless you're obviously trying to aim in your shell, then stop fire and then keep moving again if there is an enemy that is firing at you and if you are peeking then peek very quickly fire and then retreat try to stay still as little time as possible in front of the enemy that's the best way to avoid getting penetrated in a vehicle like this and in other vehicles as well make sure that whenever there is an enemy that can fire at you keep the vehicle moving and with this vehicle's good statistics you can sort of also fire a lot of shells on the move as well now side scraping is something that this vehicle can do quite reasonably well as well it has this side skirt right here which adds a little bit of extra armor the other plate right here as you can see 900 millimeters at this extreme angle and it does even go still 300 millimeters at this this angle it's still 400 millimeters at this angle right here so this vehicle can side scrape off plates very well obviously you're gonna have to watch out for the side of the turret that is gonna be the weakest part if you are side scraping off something and then the front plate as well high penetration heat rounds or tank destroyers can go through here but generally the vehicle sides are very strong and you can side scrape in this vehicle as well so good turret keep it moving very small turret face obviously so if you keep the vehicle moving it's gonna be very difficult to hit so this vehicle has possibly the best medium tank armor at tier 10. So after seeing that this vehicle doesn't just pack a massive punch, it also can take one. How do you deal with a map like this one, which is one of my three least favorite maps in the entire game? But how do you play on this one? So very simple, go to the medium side. If you're the only person going to the medium side and the enemy only have one medium as well, it's fine. But you always want to fight from a advantage. Remember that. Even in a tank like as good as the EFTM, you always want to have the advantage on your side. And in this case, the enemies, they have three mediums, but they decided to go into the city where no medium ideally belongs in the optimal cases. Obviously, we know that a lot of battles aren't going to be the optimal case, but ideally, you don't want to go in there. Even though, with the E50M, you could. Because this vehicle has excellent side armor, so you could side scrape off a house all day long. And you'll probably still do decently well at it. So, that's the beautiful thing of the E50M. It can do absolutely anything. I mean, you probably shouldn't spend your battle sniping from the back. Because it is a vehicle that likes to get down and dirty in the front. But it could do that too. It has the accuracy for it. So... Yeah, now we're going to play this hull down position right here. And what can that Tortoise or that M46 or the 60P do? Can they push forward? No. I've got my team to support me here. And the E50M's turret is built in a way where, yes, the face of it is only 300 millimeters, which means a lot of premium ammo is going to go through. But it is shaped in a way and small enough that if you keep the vehicle moving, you're just not going to get penned all that often in the turret. And that is all that you need. If you get penned once for every time you fire two shots at the enemy, you have 1,900 hit points this thing. That's almost 4,000 damage you can deal simply by trading 2v1. So that's ideal. That's what you want to go for. And now, what are we doing there? I don't want to stare head first and then a 60 TP. It's got too much alpha damage. So I'm going to go around and find something else, especially because the team's kind of falling apart here. And here's a Karo, which... He is not very good uh, of a vehicle. And I just put one shot into him. He doesn't pen. And now I'm just going to run him down. And he's gone. That is the power of the E50M. To stalk around the map. Preying on vulnerable enemies. And then eliminating them with precision and style. That's what the E50M is all about. And unlike a, a Leopard 1. Which has no protection of its own. That is also really good at running around the map and preying on vulnerable enemies, this thing, if it gets into a fight, it can defend itself plenty fine. Now, in this battle, what you might have not noticed yet, but the enemy CS-63 is actually uh, Peter, who is also a YouTuber and streamer, and he actually tries to play well at the game. Uh, so if you want to uh, learn some things about Blitz, and here's the thing. Peter, do an E50M stream. I know you already did one. Do another one. So, because the E50M is just better. So, watch him if you want to know really good how to play 
because I don't try to play well during my streams. He does, so check him out and have some E50M gameplay there. But this thing, like, look at this. I'm side scraping off the air here against the 57 Heavy. It's just, there is nothing on this planet that could tell me the E50M is bad. Because it isn't. This thing is great. Get it. Now.